So today we're going to be taking a look at a scenario where the entire world goes into total war. Now I did this video a couple months ago and it did great. And I actually, I love the concept of the video, like every single country going to war, everyone has to pick a side and fight against the other side. And honestly, that's just a really fun concept and I'm going to try to do it again here. Now the reason I'm redoing this video is because my knowledge from like however many months ago up until now has expanded the more videos i do on mapping the more i read the comments the more i learn and so on and so forth there's also some countries i was pretty questionable about in that last video this video i've got them all sorted out and yeah so if you guys do enjoy this video make sure to leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel if you're new we're aiming for 90k by the end of the year 100k was the original goal and that's probably impossible now so 90k will certainly do if you haven't subscribed make sure to subscribe share this channel with people who like mapping and let's go ahead and jump right into this video so the two sides here here, go figure will be the United States and Russia. Russia will be taking control of the red team in the United States the blue team, a classical lineup here. Uh, we have the number one country in the world versus the number two country in the world in terms of military. And they just so happen to be West and East. So they're going to be fighting it out. And of course, each of these guys have tons and tons of allies. Russia has hundreds. Not, there's definitely not hundreds. Russia has a lot. The US has a lot. I was going to say tens, but that doesn't sound right. But yeah, let's go ahead and sort out these teams. So first of all, for the United States, most obviously NATO. There's no doubt about it that the majority of NATO is US backing because it is the US's alliance. And it also is formed to kind of prevent Russia from, you know, invading. So here we have all of NATO filled in all 30 countries. And yeah, NATO itself is enough to defeat Russia. As we see in Ukraine, they can't even take out Ukraine with a bunch of NATO weapons. And, uh, you know, imagine Russia versus the entirety of NATO. That would not be pretty to watch if you were Russian. So just to add in a few more countries, because there are two countries who are in the process of joining NATO, and that has stalled out greatly because of her Hungary and Turkey. Uh, Hungary said they were going to do it in December of this year. Now it says January of next year, and I'm just going to assume that it's going to keep getting postponed for them. Turkey, they'll probably never ratify, so it's just kind of avoided process. But nonetheless, in this scenario right here, Sweden and Finland would most certainly, 100% join in on the side of nato now remember there are no neutral sides in this war every single country is going to have to pick a side that's right countries like chad they're gonna have to choose let's go ahead and just knock out europe real quick ireland would most certainly join in on the blue team they're a neutral country but they would not join on the red team that makes no sense same thing with switzerland and austria these guys i mean they're surrounded so if for some reason some weird dictator got involved it just isn't going to end well for them and as for the micro countries like monaco vatican san marino Liechtenstein, all blue team over here um these are the only micro states so they're all going to join in on the blue team and door as well getting on bosnia and herzegovina they're going to join in on the blue team but there is that one problem with serbska and them breaking away and forming a civil war which we'll address that later if we do at all kosovo blue team and then serbia would join in on the red team they are a russian ally slash puppet and um yeah i mean it would make sense for them to join the blue team to not like get obliterated again but we're gonna go off of like political standings instead of like geographical standings because in terms of geography serbia would join in on the blue team but in terms of politics serbia would most certainly be on russia's side speaking of russia's side belarus on the red team and ukraine and moldova on the blue team pretty self-explanatory as for georgia they join in on the blue team azerbaijan on the blue team and armenia is kind of interesting now as of recently they've kind of broken ties with russia however they will not be joining in on the side of azerbaijan and turkey which means there's only one other option that being the red team. Finally, Cyprus, they are in a sticky situation. Uh, Turkey is invading them. Greece owns them, sort of. Want, they kind of want to own them. And then the UK is there, the UN's there. Cyprus is a messed up little tiny island, but nonetheless, blue team. And now we're done with Europe and Northern North America. Teams are all set up here. Now we have to go down a little south and figure out the rest of the world. Starting off in North America, Mexico joins in on the blue team. This is kind of a go figure. Um, the relations with the US, they're not great, but they're not horrible enough to where they would join russia's side and this is going to go for a majority of uh, central america here belize uh guatemala i didn't forget for a second el salvador a u.s ally we have honduras and then we have costa rica and panama both u.s allies but i did skip over nicaragua because they do have an interesting government alignment that being with china and russia therefore they'll be joining in on the red team another country in the americas joining in on the red team is cuba this is go figure their government it does not like the americans so their only other option is the red team they have ties with russia and china so why would they not join in on their allies side as for the bahamas pretty self-explanatory haiti dominican republic jamaica 
all joining in on the blue team these little islands out here they're kind of irrelevant but they will join in on the blue team and that's all of north america all sorted out a majority of it going to the blue team because of the us's influence but now we get on to south america where the us's influence is a little less but still there nonetheless countries like colombia will easily join in on their side other us allies include chile and i think the front three countries up here would most likely join in on the blue team but as for the rest of the continent their um i guess alignment could be questioned not questioned to the point where it's like oh they're definitely russian uh, I think there's a lot of countries here that aren't colored in that are definitely pro USA and would join in on the US side But starting up in the north we're gonna go with Venezuela and they're gonna join in on the red team for a multitude of reasons They don't like the US the US is funding an opposing government in Venezuela and just it's Venezuela now going over to Ecuador They are a very neutral country. However, given the circumstances and given their partnership with the USA They're joining in on the blue team now let's go ahead and roll the dice with brazil here in the last total war video everyone was commenting about how brazil was in bricks and they should be on russia's side and that i was wrong because brazil is in bricks well here's the thing bricks is not a military alliance bricks is an economical alliance with russia china india brazil and south africa now you guys should probably have figured it out that china and india being an alliance is impossible military wise that doesn't make sense so it must be economical and that is what it is. So Brazil being in BRICS does not affect who they join. And I do think they join in on the US side here. The US has better ties with Brazil than Russia does. And overall, it just makes more sense geographically. And now I know I said I wasn't going to think geographically, but like, I mean, the US right here, Russia, they have to, I mean, they're going to lose access to the Atlantic almost right away. So they're going to have to go. I mean, they probably also lose access to the Pacific. I, I didn't really think about it, but Russia's probably going to get starved here because Korea and Japan blue team russia doesn't have any warm water ports but yeah they won't even be able to get to brazil so they're not going to be able to do that brazil joins in on the blue team as for the rest of the continent blue team i know argentina and peru could be questionable as well as bolivia it just makes sense they wouldn't go against each other in this scenario it makes more sense for them to be united geographically and just have to deal with venezuela i mean the uk and the falkland islands do present a problem for argentina joining in on the blue team but that's just a tiny border dispute as opposed to a war with the rest of the South America continent. And once again, that is me kind of thinking geographically, like Argentina's ties with Russia versus the USA. They are stronger with the USA. Therefore, they would automatically go to the USA. Peru and Bolivia, I mean, I wouldn't put them in Russia's category, uh, but also like probably not the US's category. So they're kind of just in between. I'm going to split them for the USA here. But yeah, this is a lot of blue here. And this isn't looking good for Russia. So let's go ahead and get them some allies. Coming over here to, uh, I guess, Central Asia. Mongolia joins their team as well as Kazakhstan. Now, Kazakhstan is trending in a neutral direction. However, once again, um, taking a little bit into account geography here just to balance it out. It doesn't make sense for them to join the blue team. It's kind of like with Armenia where like they're neutral but there's also that straining tie that still remains and that's the case with kazakhstan here that's also the case with the majority of the remaining countries like uzbekistan turkmenistan as well and then we get the tajikistan and kyrgyzstan though these are an interesting group because they are engaged in active conflict neither of them would break for the usa but neither of them would want to go on the same side as each other so it makes for a very difficult situation we have two eastern countries fighting against each other they're not Western at all, so they're not going to join the U.S. side. What do they do? They get over it, and they join the red team anyway. Now moving on to probably the... I mean, this, everyone saw this coming. China on the red team. Makes sense. Why wouldn't they? We have North Korea on the red team. We have Iran on the red team. Afghanistan on the red team. And Pakistan on the red team. Now, Pakistan is an interesting country here because they have ties with the usa and those ties do exist and um also they have even stronger ties with china they have ties with russia i wouldn't say they're strong but they are there but the main reason pakistan is going to the red team is because india is going to the blue team this country is going to be a big game changer in this war because they are the third strongest and fourth strongest in the world their economy is huge their population huger Huger isn't a word, but it is now. And they will not go to the red team for Russia. Get that out of your head. Think about it for a second. Russia is doing bad things in Ukraine. India isn't going to, they're not going to denounce it because they don't want to lose said ties with Russia. But in terms of like their ties with the US and Russia, India is split down the middle. 50% USA, 50% Russia. It is right there. I can't even tie break it. So we're going to base it off of like their border countries. India will never, ever join the same side as china that is impossible therefore they must join the blue team and luckily enough pakistan's on the red team so it works out they're not on the same team as pakistan which also would be impossible so india on the blue team just makes sense as for the rest of these countries over here nepal breaks for the blue team bhutan breaks for the blue team bangladesh would probably go blue team just because they're so close to india and those ties are probably 
I wouldn't. I don't know if they're stronger than their ties with China, but I just think that Bangladesh would make the decision to go with the blue team in terms of thinking politically. There's no reason why they shouldn't, and that's exactly why they join. Sri Lanka is an interesting one. They're right off the coast of India. However, their ties with China have been growing in recent times. Therefore, they will go over to the red team for some reason. I don't know why they're doing that. Moving on down to Southeast Asia, Myanmar, pretty easy to kind of like think out they're going to the red team as for cambodia and lao lao goes for the red team cambodia goes for the red team we have thailand breaking for the blue team and finally vietnam this was a source of a lot of confusion in the last total war video because i put them on the blue team vietnam and the usa have good relations in real life i know it's hard to think of but those relations have been repaired and they're good. Vietnam and the USA, they have a lot of trade going back and forth. And Vietnam does not like China. It's a common misconception that communist countries like each other. Um, that is not the case with Vietnam and China. China and Vietnam, throughout all of history, even in BC times, China and Vietnam just... It has never worked out. China has been invading Vietnam forever. Vietnam has been kicking them out forever, so on and so forth. The Vietnamese join in on the blue team. Now we come over to the three allies of the East, South Korea, Japan, and the, uh, the, this guy, Taiwan. Maybe four allies, but we're focusing up here. So Japan, Korea, and Taiwan all go to the blue team. Go figure. Uh, if anyone questioned this, I would probably be questioning your sanity. As for the Philippines, as just stated, they go to the blue team. They could be that fourth ally, but it, this just looks better than this, I guess. But now we go down to Oceania. Now, this is going to be interesting because Indonesia is like kind of a 50-50 country. I guess we'll go ahead and get Malaysia out of the way. They join the blue team as well as Bur Burundi. I don't want to get them in Brunei confused, which they're actually... Wait, no, this is Brunei. Burundi is over here next to Rwanda. I get those countries confused every time. Don't scold me, please. So yeah, that goes well. We go over to Papua New Guinea, easy, blue team. As for all these oceanic islands, they have no reason not to go to the blue team. New Zealand, blue team, and of course, Australia as well, going to the blue team. Now zooming out on this world map, you might think that the blue team has the advantage here, and it certainly does look like it, and it certainly might even be the case. However, the red team has pretty much all of Asia under their control. The red team has one consolidated front, versus the blue team who has many fronts due to their like spreading out all over the world but back to indonesia i'm gonna put them on the blue team here i know that it could go either way but just it just makes sense for them to go to the blue team in my head and i'm definitely not trying to be biased here or anything like it, this is a made-up scenario i don't really care who goes on what team i'm just putting the countries on the corresponding team based on how i know they would go we've gotten every continent except for africa and then the region of the middle east i save the middle east because everyone loves the middle east i've been making a lot of middle eastern videos lately and no one really likes them so i guess i'll just go through the middle east really quickly here all right iraq syria lebanon palestine all are going to the red team yemen goes to the red team and then as for everyone else, Israel goes to the blue team, Jordan goes to the blue team, Kuwait on the blue, that's not Kuwait, Kuwait on the blue team, Saudi Arabia on the blue team, Qatar, uh, the UAE and Oman all going to the blue team. Pretty easy region to knock out. I mean, yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory as to who hates who and why. But now we go to Africa and I'm going to do this north to south. Um, this is going to be interesting because in the last video, I also had limited political knowledge of Africa, but I've kind of grown in that area. I know a little bit more now. It still isn't 100%, so I might struggle a little bit, but overall, I think I got the grasps. So first off, we have Morocco. They're gonna go over to the blue team. Following this, we have Tunisia joining the blue team, and now we have Algeria and Libya going to the red team. As for Mauritania, red team. Mali goes to the red team. Niger goes to the red team. And Western Sahara simply sinks into the ocean. I'm actually gonna color it in because I have to get the thumbnail, which will just be this map. But do know, the Western Sahara shall sink. Now we go over here to the Horn slash North uh, eastern part of Africa. This is a confusing region because of Egypt and Ethiopia. Ethiopia has ties with the US, but also does Egypt and, you know, they hate each other. Sudan and South Sudan also don't help out because I don't think South Sudan would break for the red team. They could, they might, they probably could, but hey, that's just, it's going to be interesting. So starting off with Egypt, this is one of those make or break things, but I think they are leaning towards one side compared to the other. And that side will be the blue team. In the previous video, I believe I had them on the red team, although I could be wrong. I know I had Algeria on the wrong team. I know I had Nigeria on the wrong team. I got those two mixed up. But other than that, I'm not, I don't remember what I did in the last video. Both Egypt on the blue team, we have a weird decision to make for the rest of this area. Ethiopia will go to the, uh, Ethiopia will go to the red team. 
and that's just to spite Egypt. But now it gets really funky with Artrea also going to the red team. If you don't know, Artrea and Ethiopia are in kind of a war. Kind of, it's kind of like a proxy war, sort of, kind of. And it just it, it doesn't make sense to put them on the same team. This is just one of those scenarios where they're going to have to deal with it. Following this, Sudan goes to the red team. Also kind of contradicting with Ethiopia and Egypt as well. But that does make way for South Sudan to go to the blue team. South Sudan has relations with Ethiopia, so it doesn't really make sense. But it's just another one of those things where it just this region right here, these four countries, it just it has to be this way. But moving on from these guys, Djibouti, I'm going to put them on the blue team. I have no idea who they would go to in real life because they're split once again. They have military bases for everyone. As for Somalia, red team. I know there's also some problem with Ethiopia there. Uh, it just turns out that Ethiopia is a major problem in this region. It just should just be removed. But now jumping back over here to southern, southern Western Africa, because this is a southern coast. So I guess that makes it south. Senegal and the Gambia, they are going to split over for the blue team. And following this is basically just a domino effect into this region. These guys have no reason not to join the blue team. Their relations with the blue team are just simply stronger than that of the rest of the continent. Liberia, they could go either way um, because of the past with the USA, but ultimately they made the better decision just to join the blue team here. As for Nigeria, blue team, I'm pretty sure I put them on the red team last time. That was an incorrect assumption, so now they're going to go to the blue team, which makes more sense because Nigeria has relations with the UK as well as the USA. As for Chad, they are in a very particularly struggling area. I know Chad and Libya had a war, the Toyota war. That was a crazy war. If you don't know what that is, look it up. But Chad and Libya, they have tensions with each other, which automatically puts Chad on the blue team. Now zooming out, this map is looking... Um, Probably about the same in terms of spread. The red team looks to have the advantage and they probably do. And honestly, it's not gonna get much better from here. So let's just go ahead and knock out the East African Federation. These guys, I mean, Kenya is a big US ally. Uganda, uh, Tanzania, Burundi, Rwanda, all those guys joining in on the blue team. Also, the DRC. Um, the DRC is an interesting country. We're going to ignore all the things that they do and put them on the blue team. Now here's where I'm gonna make some interesting throw ups here. Um, Angola goes to the red team. I'm not sure if they would actually do this in real life. Um, it, I feel like they, they might. But if we were talking real life, then the countries are gonna to start to factor in geopolitical positioning and that's where the blue team would gain the advantage in this scenario. So I'm still trying to factor all that out, although it's kind of impossible to do. Madagascar, blue team. We have South Africa, blue team. Lesotho and Eswatini, blue team. Maybe a blue team. And yeah, it's just blue team. Now here is my uh, struggle area. Um, I don't know. Let's try to balance it out a little bit. Um, throwing away some of the realism I wanted to implement. We're going to have the uh, car going over to the red team. I know the Republic of Congo and the DRC actually don't have horrible relations with each other. We're going to ignore that though. We go to the red team, Cameroon. They used to be German and German was bad back then, which means it must be bad now. No offense, Germany. So they joined the red team. And from here, Gabon and Equatorial Guinea, they're just gonna go to the blue team. So here is our map. I think it definitely looks different from the previous map of the Total War video. If you don't know what that looks like, then just go watch the old Total War video because it was a banger. You guys loved it. I think it's the third most popular video on this channel, which that's crazy. That's over 500,000 views. And I just want to say like real quick, it's kind of weird that I don't have a video with a million views. I'm not saying that as in like I deserve a video with a million views. That's not what I'm getting at. I'm just saying like my most popular video, I think it has 600,000 views. And you're like, oh, wow, that's a lot. And it is. But when you take a look at the total channel views, we have 21, almost 21 million views total. Not a single one of our popular videos is a major contributor to our total channel view amount. And that is something really special because it means that we aren't just built off of one video. We aren't just built off of one viral thing that everyone enjoyed and left. We were built off of an entire channel. That's a really special thing to have on YouTube. And I just, I just want to say that I'm really grateful for it. And yeah, so thank you guys for that. I mean, we have multiple really popular videos. Those do contribute, but also these little videos, they're not little videos. The, the smaller view count videos, the 30 to, I guess the 30 to 90K videos, those are the smaller videos, although th that's still an insane amount of views. They also contribute. I mean, you get three 90K videos, you get 270,000 views. That equals almost one of the big videos. So you can see how all of these videos, they trickle up to make that 20 million view count. It's not just one video. And that's what's really special about this channel. I thought I would just bring that to light because it's an interesting thing and it's a very cool thing. So yeah, thank you for that. And um, I'm saying that as in I'm ending the video. I'm not. Everyone has to kill each other first. So let's go ahead and jump into that. So with Western Sahara officially sunk, 
the world can start killing each other. But wait, some countries have to make their exit. Bosnia and Herzegovina, a very explosive country, and I mean that literally. They're filled with mines, but they're also filled with sinking. Another country that sinks sometimes is Myanmar for some reason. And now Myanmar is gone, and that's going to help out India a lot. What other countries sink into the ocean a lot? I kind of forgot which countries I sink. I mean, I know Bosnia and Herzegovina, they're the main one. I think Israel and Palestine, they, they sink a lot, but Israel is a major contributor. So yeah, that does it for sinking. Unless we just do that, that will fix a lot of problems. So Tajikistan is gone, and that's going to help out Kyrgyzstan in fighting this war. Anyway, let's start off in North America. I'm not going to do this little by little. This will probably be done in chunks around the world because we we're already 30 minutes in the recording. I have things I have to do when I edit this video tomorrow. That includes going to work. I'm not looking forward to that, but here I am. I gotta have some normality in my life, I guess. But yeah, Cuba, they're just gonna get steamrolled here within the first couple of weeks. No big surprise, we also have Nicaragua going away. And as for Venezuela, South America is gonna mobilize against them. The USA isn't even gonna help because it's the entirety of South America going after Venezuela. Also, Trinidad and Tobago, they are not on the red team, they are on the blue team. But I'll go ahead and jump the pond over to Europe, where they're going to quickly take over Kaliningrad, as well as get a pretty good portion of serbia back over here in europe though we have russia pushing into ukraine we're not accounting for the current ukraine war and we're also accounting for the fact that russia is fully mobilized in this scenario making them do better in ukraine russia is also going to send some people up into the baltics and even into finland as for the middle east it's going to be pretty predictable armenia falls within a couple of days probably not days though because they're a very mountainous country palestine lebanon syria they're all wiped out with ease turkey pushes into northern iraq and meets the iranian border saudi arabia pushes up into southern iraq and the middle east is going to be won over by the blue team pretty quickly but now we go over to the red team strong suits which are over here in asia capturing kashmir is a bloodbath no one wants to go there because it's going to be pretty similar to hell when the when the fighting starts but pakistan and china do have the slight advantage just because of the numbers india has this place fortified but it's just the numbers are going to overwhelm and also speaking the himalayas you you don't invade those so there will be no like back and forth on this border it's a little bit less mountainous over here so the chinese are going to have a little bit of success pushing and they're also going to use the myanmar sea to make a landing over here in bangladesh and in india that will consolidate their front and they'll be able to meet the border of bangladesh and give them a little bit of an advantage over here against india as for vietnam they're going to lose the north to the communists once again however them in thailand are going to take out cambodia and southern Laos. some important factors to note here is that australia new zealand and indonesia they're all sending their troops up into Southeast Asia, which will hold off the Chinese here for a pretty long time. Coming to Sri Lanka, they don't stand a chance. And now we go over to South Korea, Japan, and Taiwan. Now Taiwan's gonna get wiped out here by China pretty easily. Well, probably not easily, but they're gonna get wiped out pretty quickly. And the North and the Chinese are gonna have a little bit of success pushing into South Korea here. Of course, Japan will be able to help hold off China, and this is probably as far as they're gonna get into South Korea because we are talking about the number four and wait no number five and number six strongest country so they'll be able to hold off number two and whatever number north korea is yes i just called china number two because russia does not deserve number two anymore but now we get down to africa where nobody knows what's going on i don't blame them because i don't know what's going on either morocco spain and france are working together to take on algeria is something that i would never ever think I would say but here we are these guys are gonna have success pushing into algeria who's going to start to crumble pretty quickly due to internal issues tunisia is going to get suppressed a little bit but not enough because uh, a good old friend known as italy will help them out speaking of italy they're going to do some italian things and land in tripoli and take over libya's capital as for egypt here they're not going to help out the middle east because the middle east has it down they're going to go after libya and sudan mostly focusing in over here in northern libya egypt sends a convoy across to eventually meet up with italy that goes successfully and libya is on the verge of capitulating as for sudan they are going to meet a little bit more resistance as sudan is just a stronger country but nonetheless, they make their way down into northern Eritrea. I don't know why Malawi is on the freaking red team, but they are not on the red team in this scenario. Angola, you're in a really bad spot. You're, I mean, you're surrounded by South Africa and the DRC. I think that probably says enough. Same thing with the Republic of Congo. But uh, Cameroon, you're also just, yeah, yeah, it's not pretty over here in Africa. The northern African countries, though, they are going to have a little bit of advantage in, like, holding out. But in terms of power... They, they're just not there. Let's check in on Venezuela who, um, yep, they're, they capitulated. They're done. And just like that, the Western Hemisphere is won by the blue team. And it doesn't take long just to skim over this map and see that it's not going to end well for the red team at all. They don't really have a chance in any areas except for like maybe holding out in Asia. But other than that, it they're just 
it's not going to be pretty. So back to Africa here. These Southern Blue Team graduates, they're not very strong. So Mauritania, uh, Mali, and Nigeria, they're going to have a little bit of success pushing into them. The real game changer over here is Nigeria, who, um, you know, they just finished Cameroon off, which means they're going to go after Niger. Chad is going to go full force and invade every single country around it. They meet up with the Egyptians and successfully cut off the Saharan region from the rest of Africa which is now literally just the horn. Ethiopia and Somalia have a little bit of success pushing into Kenya and South Sudan. And then Sudan itself also had some success, but they had to withdraw their troops because of um, impending doom. I forgot about Yemen, not gonna lie. They don't exist. The Middle Eastern front for Iran just collapsed. However, they are holding on pretty strong. As for Ukraine, they are getting absolutely obliterated. Um, this is not happening in real life, but in this scenario, you know, the blue team troops are still having to move into Ukraine, which means that they are actually going to capitulate to Russia here. I'm not sure if that actually happens in a real world world scenario like this. I think the most likely thing to happen in a real world scenario like this is um, nuclear annihilation. But since I don't do that in videos, we're not going to have it. As for the Baltics, they are dunzos. But this is as far as Russia and Belarus are going to get. They might invade a little bit into Poland, but other than that... The blue wall is here, and the blue wall just toppled its own wall as they push back the Russians in both Poland and Ukraine. To India here, we have Pakistan doing a little bit more in southern India, but other than that, they're stopped as the Indian people are now enlisting in the military in mass amounts to stop Pakistan's invasion. We do see India have a little bit of success over here with Bangladesh and pushing back the Chinese. And then heading on down to the south here, no border changes. Like I said earlier, this is probably going to be a stalemated region. South Korea and Japan managed to push back the Chinese a little bit, but once again, they are not able to push them out of the country. And it is here the red team has a big uh-oh. And that uh-oh was the capitulation of three pretty important countries in a certain region. What are those three countries? Well, Algeria, Libya, and Sudan. Am I overestimating the blue team here? I'm underestimating them because it's just war. I mean, the red team countries, they're they're not strong. The only place that the red team would actually thrive in a scenario like this is Asia. And that's just because they're all next to each other. All the strong red team countries are here. Everywhere else that's the red team, they're just completely screwed. Like, especially in Africa with Europe just being right there. I mean, of course, Europe is going to also like go after Russia. But like Algeria, Libya, you are not in a good spot to survive. But speaking of not surviving, with Li Libya and Algeria gone, Mauritania, Mali, and Niger all surrender. All their troops are pulled out of Western South Africa, or Southern West Africa, whatever it is. And the Horn is all that remains. Now, Ethiopia has a pretty interesting ge geographical region. It's not enough, though. I mean, it's them versus Africa. They're going to lose. There it goes. Goodbye. And now we're just left with uh, Asia. Now, let's be honest here. Do this stand a chance? not i mean sort of i want to go ahead and jump ahead and show you the final stalemated borders of this war all right so here we go after months of fighting the two sides meet for peace but this is what the final borders are going to look like now here we have russia having a little bit of success in europe i mean they aren't getting invaded and they aren't losing any lands so that's a good start for them they're able to use an influx of volunteers and troops from central asia in order to hold off the europeans which i mean at this point the usa is also probably going to japan and korea as well as india and even southeast asia so they're not facing a concentrated u.s army in europe and that's probably for the best for russia they did get pushed back though in finland the baltics and ukraine however they do still hold a lot of land in ukraine and belarus is serving as a buffer right now so they're fine their biggest threat for incursion is probably over here in estonia and capturing st petersburg which is something that the blue team probably wants to do before they meet for peace officially that will be like a big um like a i have this so you should give up that kind of thing going down to the caucuses we had a breakout campaign for the red team here iran was able to hold off the blue team and push back turkey and they even met up with russia through azerbaijan and georgia as well as armenia they're back but other than that not much happening here for turkey we move over down to india where they were able to push out the pakistanis from this region they did lose a little bit more grip over kashmir but then again, it's just like, it's China and Pakistan versus India. So not very fair for India. And then they lost a lot of land over here in the Panhandle. And I mean, it's very mountainous over here. So this is unlikely. But China at this point is just sending their troops everywhere. Kind of like what the US is doing, but on like fewer fronts, I want to say. They're primarily focusing on India though. Down to Southeast Asia though, um, I'm going to contradict what I just said. And we see that China did have a little bit of success. They were able to push back and take more of Northern Lao as well as push into Northern Thailand. And over in Korea, um, nothing happened. So yeah, that will be the final borders of this war. 
Eventually, this will um, turn into a war of attrition if it isn't already. But following that, the blue team will win. And it's not going to be pretty. It's going to be a hard fought battle. And it's just going to be there's going to be like hundreds of millions dead. That's not good. So let's hope this never happens. It most likely won't ever happen because we have beautiful countries such as Switzerland and Austria. But yeah, that's going to do it for this scenario. I'm not going to do a peace treaty because I'm 44 minutes into recording this. I'm not going to have much time to edit it. And I just, I, I mean, do we really have to have a peace treaty every video? Probably. But yeah, so if you guys did enjoy this video, like the video, subscribe to the channel. That's the most important factor. Share the video, share the channel, um, get more people to subscribe. We are aiming for 100K. As for next week, we'll have one last normal video going up on the 28th. We'll have a live stream on the 30th and a special video going up on the 31st. So tell me guys what you want to see for that last 28th mapping video. I've been planning to do this video for weeks now and just haven't had time to do it. And I know why I had to wait so long because it took me 45 minutes to do it. But anyway, once again, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next Wednesday.